the title of my presentation is Current Vortex Seed Dynamics in Magnetohydrodynamics Dynam Dynamic Flows. Uh, Can you just switch manually? Doesn't work. Can you switch manually? Yeah, it does work. So just switch manually. So you just need to proceed and switch it manually because it works if you... If you no, 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 no. I'd like to use a red, razor, red, razor pointer, pointer, pointer. Ah, you need a pointer, not, not switching. Okay. Anyone has a laser pointer? These are my collaborators. Is it, it's, it's okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, this is risk my risk of instability, and this is MHD, risk my risk of instability. And my talk is mainly about this MHD, risk my risk of instability. And uh, this study is summarized in this reference. The purpose of this study is uh, determine the motion of a vortex seat in a magnetic field, including, bulk, including bulk field. Uh, a vortex seat in a magnetic field is called current vortex seat, uh, such as MHD Richtman Meshkov instability, uh, MHD Kelvin Helmholtz, Kelvin Helmholtz instability, and MHD Rayleigh Taylor instability, and so on. The motivation is my study is Uh, extraordinary strong magnetic field amplification in supernova remnants. Uh, in 2007, uh, magnetic field in supernova remnants uh, is more than 100 times larger than surrounding interstellar matter. Uh, this in fact, is found in 2007 uh, by these researchers. Uh, and uh, there is a question, why such strong magnetic field is produced in supernova remnants? And uh, these researchers gave the answer to this question by numerical simulations. Uh, the answer is the existence of a vortex seat. Uh, that is, the existent, existence of a velocity shear amplifies the magnetic field. Uh, this is the re numerical result. And the uh, mechanism is as follows first. Uh, there is a velocity shear in the system, and uh, the velocity shear uh, stretches the interface. The, the extension of the interface causes the magnetic field amplification through the induction 
equation. And the current study is uh, current study provides the theoretical mechanism of this amplification. And uh, uh, application as an application, we consider the suppression of fluid instabilities in inertial confinement fusion. Uh, the outline of talk is as follows. First, we derive uh, governing equations of seat model. Uh, this is uh, a theoretical model of a vortex seat. And uh, the advantage of this seat model is the dynamics in two-dimensional MHD flow is reduced to the motion of a cup uh, uh, that is uh, one-dimensional dynamics. And second, we construct bulk fields from the boundary data. Uh, uh, the, in the current study, we take the MHD Richtman Meshkov instability as an example. And uh, we calculate the growth of magnetic field and uh, compare with ideal MHD simulations. And finally, we apply the theory to MHD Kelvin Helmholtz instability. The physical situation is uh, given as follows. The, uh, there is an interface in the system between two fluids, and the interface is a vortex seat with current. And the tangential velocity of the interface jumps. Uh, there is a sharp, uh, sharp density difference between this interface. The properties of the system is as follows. Uh, first, uh, it's implicit and incompressible to the MHD system, and uh, velocity shear initially distributes across, across the interface. Uh, and the homogeneous magnetic field uh, B0 here, here uh, is uh, parallel to the interface, is initially applied uh, to this system. And uh, this is important. Uh, there is uh, an assumption that the current free in the bulk at T is equal to zero. And then, Bulk magnetic and the velocity fields and the interfacial dynamics are uniquely determined by initial velocity shear. Uh, that is, this is an initial value problem, mathematically. Uh, these are examples of calculations by seat model. This is pure richtman meshkov instability, and this is uh, pure kelvin helmholtz instability. Uh, this is the governing equation of, of our theoretical model. Uh, it's 2D invisible and incompressible MHD flow, typical MHD flow. And taking the rotations of the MHD Euler equations and uh, induction equations, we can obtain the evolution equation of the current J and the vorticity omega as follows. When we set initially uh, the current and the vorticity are uh, equals to zero in the bulk, we can we, we obtain the result that uh, current and the vorticity are uh, all zeros for all finite t in the bulk. Uh, this is the current vortex seat. And uh, this 
result guarantees that the current and the vorticity localize at the interface. This is the definition of uh, uh, current vortex seed. So uh, we proceed to the motion of the interface. The interface is parameterized by a Lagrangian parameter theta here. And the uh, velocity of the interface as given by the normal velocity u and the tangential velocity t as follows, uh, where q, vector q is uh, vortex-induced velocity, which is uh, called the back of road equation uh, in the seat model community. And uh, it's given as follows, where Ta is an um, arbitrary tangential velocity, and uh, which is first provided by these researchers for the calculation of a vortex seat with surface tension. We use this uh, tangential velocity here. Next, uh, when we set the total pressure continuous conditions across the interface, then we obtain the uh, evolution equation for the vortex heat strength, gamma. Gamma is provided by the circulation capital gamma as follows. The derivative of circulation is uh, small gamma, the seat strength here. And uh, uh, where Ra is uh, called the Alben number, Alben Maha number, uh, which is the ratio between magnetic and convective energies, and uh, it is provided by this form, uh, where V linear is uh, the linear velocity, linear growth velocity of RMI, and uh, V0 is uh, the linear alpha velocity. The ratio is, uh, the ratio gives RA. And uh, finally, we consider the normal component of magnetic field. Uh, the normal component of magnetic field is actually zero here. Uh, if uh, initially it is zero, uh, this is this corresponds to the frozen condition in plasmas. Uh, but uh, this is derived mathematically here, and uh, uh, as a, as a result. Uh, we only consider the tangential component of magnetic field. Uh, this is, uh, this, uh, this is derived from the induction equation, and uh, this uh, determines the tangential component of the magnetic field by induction equation. So we can determine the current, we can determine the motion of the current vortex seat using, using, using one interfacial velocity uh, to evolution equation of vortex seat strength gamma and three induction equation. Uh, these three equations determine the uh, current vortex seat. Next, we consider the bulk field. Uh, this is the main theorem in this reference uh, theorem. There exist two different solenoidal vectors, BIS and the 
and the rotational potential fields chi i, and the magnetic field B is represented by this form. Uh, this theory indicates that uh, two fields exist in a system, but but only one uh, magnetic field exists in, in, in the system, but uh, to describe this magnetic field B, we need two potential fields, uh, chi1 and chi2. Uh, this is a potential problem. And uh, BIS is given by the Biot-Savart integral in electromagnetic theory. And uh, if we solve uh, this potential function chi by, uh, by the interfacial data, so we can determine the mo we can determine the interfacial motion and the bulk field simultaneously. And so, uh, anyway, we can determine the bulk field from, uh, only from the information of the interface. Before discussing the result of seat model, we mention here the comparison between uh, ideal MHD simulation shocked interface and uh, potential flow simulations. The upper three figures shows, upper, uh, these three figures show the result of uh, ideal MHD simulation shocked interface and the lower three figures show the result of potential flow model. Uh, these are very similar, and uh, we can conclude that Richter-Mesikoff instability MHD RMI occurs essentially by velocity shear at the interface. Taking into account these results, we proceed to the, the results of seat model. This is the result of seat model. This is, these are velocity fields in the whole region. Uh, this is calculated by the Biot-Savart law. And the uh, velocity field intersects, intersects the interface around here uh, when sheet strength gamma changes its sign. It occurs at the spike around here, 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 and here. Uh, in the velocity field, the normal component of the velocity is continuous, uh, this condition. So uh, the velocity field intersects the interface. However, uh, magnetic field is different. These are magnetic field in the bulk. Uh, this is provided by the theorem in the previous slide. Uh, this is the potential program with boundary condition. Uh, as you can see, the ma bulk magnetic field is parallel to the interface, even though the current changes its sign, its sign around here, blue to red. Uh, it's signed due to, uh, this is due to the introduction uh, of two fields. Uh, because of two fields, uh, we can construct a parallel magnetic field in spite of uh, the current changes its sign. The color body knows the current sheet strength. This is, this is corresponds to the strength of current density.
And this is the magnetic field amplification. The rest figure shows uh, the result of the current vortex heat model, and the right figure shows uh, the result of ideal image dissimulation. These are very similar. So we can conclude that uh, this model well describes the result of ideal image dissimulations. Uh, and uh, we see that uh, uh, the vertical axis is the maximum magnetic field. And uh, color denotes the Alpen number. And we, we see that the uh, magnetic field is amplified up to about order one around here. Uh, magnetic field, uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, so, so we, we can say that the magnetic field amplification is suppressed around here. Uh, here is the place that uh, V linear, that is uh, the growth rate of RMI is nearly equal to the RPM velocity around here. This is the suppression point. Uh, this is the effect of RPM number. Uh, this is, uh, uh, these are interfacial shape. As you can see, as Alben number decreases, uh, this is uh, pure RMI. Uh, this is the 10 to the third, the 10 to the second, 10 and 0.1. As the Alben number decreases, the interface is sta stabilized. Uh, so the fluid in instability can be suppressed by a magnetic field. That is, the turbulent energy is transformed into the magnetic energy. Uh, it's almost... Uh, how much? Uh, you still have at least five minutes. Okay. And, uh, uh, okay, okay. This is the application to Kelvin Helmholtz instability. Uh, So uh, the difference between RMI and KHI are in the initial conditions. The initial condition of RMI is uh, uh, the important thing is the non-uniform velocity shear exists in RMI. Uh, this is given by in gamma. Uh, here uh, we set sinusoidal uh, initial shear. On the other hand, uh, in KHI, the initial velocity shear is uniform. Uh, here we set gamma, the initial velocity shear uh, is equal to two, uh, homogeneous one. So uh, we see that the uh, roll-up of Kelvin Helmholtz instability here and here uh, uh, is stronger than that of Richtmeier Meshkov instability, these two figures, for a fixed Alpha number. Uh, in this figure, the Alpha number is 10 to the third, and this is 10, <coughs> and same. Alben number, this and this, this and this. Uh, so the roll-up is stronger than uh, RMI in this, in this figure. Uh, this is the final result. Uh, this is the relation between the stretching rate of the interface and the mag maximum magnetic field. This figure shows the maximum stretching rate of the interface. Uh, the vertical axis denotes uh, the maximum magnetic field, which is defined by GS here. Uh, GS is 
uh, this corresponds to the temporal evolution of the reading term of the induction equation. Uh, this is the stretching rate of the interface. And this is uh, the maximum magnetic field. Uh, dotted line denotes the Kelvin-Helmholtz instability, and solid line denotes the RMI. Uh, the same color is the same Alben number. Uh, we can see that uh, compare, compare to if we compare this and uh, this, we can conclude that the extension of the interface that is stretching rate causes the magnetic field amplification. Uh, this is the universal feature of current vortex heat. Uh, so, uh, we, we mentioned here that uh, KHI, in KHI, the univar univariateness is broken at uh, one point, between 1.5 and uh, 2, the time, around, around here. So the growth rate changes like like this, this, this. Uh, the reason of this is the uh, broken univariateness of the interface. Then we can conclude that uh, both magnetic fields for RMI and KHI, both magnetic fields saturate at about order one. Uh, like in the previous slide, uh, where the magnetic energy is nearly equal to the turbulent energy. Uh, finally, we add that uh, sheet strength, vortex sheet strength. Uh, this figure shows the maximum vortex sheet strength. Uh, the vertical axis uh, denotes the absolute value of gamma. Uh, as you can see, the vortex heat strength gamma of Kelvin Helmholtz instability, these dotted lines are uh, greater than that of RMI for a uh, fixed Alben number. Uh, that is, the power as a vortex heat of Kelvin Helmholtz instability is stronger than that of Richter Meshkov instability in a magnetic field. This is summary. Uh, the nonlinear evolution of current vortex heat in MHZ flows is investigated by solving a potential problem with boundary conditions in which the region is separated by an interface with, this is important, with complicated, that is, multi-valued shape uh, like mushroom. This is a very difficult potential problem mathematically. Uh, when the initial magnetic field is applied parallel to the interface, uh, this is our case. Uh, the, current, the current does not flow in the bulk, and the magnetic field does not possess the normal component even for finite t. Then we can reconstruct the fields, magnetic field and the velocity field in the whole region only from the information of the interface. Uh, the initial, initial velocity shear across the interface determines the dynamics of the interface and the bulk fields at finite t. This is also an uh, initial value problem. And uh, when the Alpen number area is large, uh, order 10 here, uh, the magnetic field is satisfactorily amplified. When uh, the Alpen number is 
small uh, urban oscillation occurs and the system itself is always stable. Uh, for that case, RMI or KHI do, does not occur. Uh, this is a note. Uh, we refer that the current vortex seat would not stationary exist if the magnetic field has a component normal, normal to the interface. Uh, for this case, for that case, uh, when we transport the vortex seat away, away from the interface, uh, for that case, we cannot apply the vortex seat model. Finally, we mentioned that the seat model can determine two fields, uh, magnetic field and velocity field, simultaneously in the whole region only from the information of the interface. We emphasize this fact. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. We still get time for one, maybe two.